Oh, okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this discussion for Physics 71. This is our first discussion, which is the topic for today is on scientific inquiry, units, and physical quantities. So um, in the ordinary face-to-face -face setting, I am allow allotting one hour of discussion for scientific inquiry because I think it's a, it's a really important topic, especially now that we're on the post-truth um, era and there are a lot of fake news everywhere. But since we are in a pandemic, I will uh, only allot a few minutes for the scientific inquiry and it will be at the last part of our discussion. Usually, uh, I allot this session at at the first part of the discussion on chapter one. But uh, again, uh, we are only, what's important right now is to cover the, the most important topics, which is on units and physical quantities. So in that case, I will be discussing first um, units and physical quantities. So here's an outline of our discussion. We'll first discuss units and physical quantities, followed by, I think this is really important, dimensional analysis, that's why it's a separate discussion. Uh, we will solve problems involving dimensional analysis. And if time permits, we will discuss scientific theory. What course, what makes a theory scientific? Uh, yeah. So we will discuss that. We will discuss Karl Popper, for example, if time permits. And then uh, again, if time permits, again, we will discuss the problem of induction by Hume. So these are really optional topics. So if ever na hindi man abutin, okay lang na hindi natin discuss yan. The important for now is we discuss units and physical quantities, such as measurements, um, accuracy and precision, uh, and these things. Uh, I will just brush up uh, especially on the significant figures because I believe some of you or most of you should have known that. Dapat din, nagsasawa na dapat kayo sa, sa significant figures, for example. And then we discuss dimensional analysis. Okay, I will focus our discussion on dimensional analysis because that's what you need. Okay, so here are the objectives of this um, discussion. First, we describe what physical quantities are. Second, we convert quantities into different units, and then we recognize the importance of significant figures, and then we express quantities in scientific notation, so I believe you should know that. I will uh, not discuss this anymore on scientific notation because uh, I, I'm assuming a lot of you or most of you should, should have known that. Okay, should know that. And then justify the dimensional consistency of a relation. This is on your so-called dimensional analysis. Okay? Okay. Are there any questions so far, guys? Uh, may mga tanong ba? May mga tanong? So far. None so far. Okay. So, what is measurement? Um, this is a very high school definition of measurement. But I think uh, uh, in physics, we are measuring a lot of things. <laughs> Not, uh, and it's a very central part of physics. So, uh, we will start with uh, measurement. And uh, this is, as I said, this is a high school definition of measurement. When we say we measure something, we compare that quantity to a known standard quantity. For example, if you are measuring uh, the length of, of the, or the width of your door, we're using a meter stick, for example, what you are doing is to compare the length of the door to a known standard measurement, which is your meter stick. Your meter stick is based on the meter, which treats a standard quantity. So something that as that we said that, okay, this is this is what one length, one meter looks like. And that one meter, when you uh, compare it to the length of the of the of the width of the door. To the, to the width of the door, the, the total distance uh, or the total length of that door or the total width of that door, um, the measured quantity that we, we, uh, we obtain from that measurement is uh, based on the standard quantity. Okay, so that's, that's how we compare a measurement. For example, we, when we weigh up a, uh, a kilogram of rice, it means that we are comparing the, what should be uh, the amount of rice that will give us one kilogram of rice. And when we do when we do that, when you check it, timbangin mo, ba? Pag tinimbang mo yan, lalabas na, ah, ganito yung timbang niya. Compared to our standard quantity, which is about one kilogram, and we know we know what one kilogram is based on our standard, yun yung lalabas, um, kung ano man yung lalabas, for example, 500 grams na pala yung, yung bigas na yan, yung amount ng bigas na yan. In that case, uh, na-compare na natin yung bigat na yun based on our standard quantity of what R1 kilogram is. So, malino ba yon? Is that clear? Is the explanation clear? Ano ibig sabihin ng definition na yan? Is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. So, precision on the other hand. So, two um terms that are to uh, that are usually used in in uh in checking the quality of measurements is your precision and accuracy. In ordinary layman language, usually uh, interchangeable, yeah. So you can use precision or accuracy uh, one way or another. So 
it can also mean the same thing. But in physics, it's not the same. Uh, it's not the same. They're not the same. When we say a measurement is precise, it means that there, you are comparing two or more measurements. And uh, if these two or more measurements are close to each other, then we say that these that the measurements that we we have done is precise. And on the other hand, if there is if we assume that there is a standard value or a standard or a true value, then we say that, uh, and then we measure something based on that true or standard value. And we, we have seen that the measurement is close to that true value. Then we say that the measurement is accurate. Okay? Malino ba yon? Malino ba? Medyo nagugunahan? Okay, let's look. So again, to, to, be, uh, to be able to check or to understand more about precision and accuracy, let's look at this diagram. So. In this diagram, we have, uh, for example, some object that is measured by a ruler, okay? So this ruler has some length. Uh, let's say we have, we have 3 cm here. Um, and then as we increase the, to the number of lines of the ruler, we see that the number of decimal places that we can use to measure that ruler increases as well. In that case, the measurement becomes more precise because um, uh, there are the uh, that's the rule of thumb. If we if we increase the number of decimal places, larger number of decimal places gives you um, larger uh, precision. But note here that we can tell anything about the accuracy of the measurement. Why? Because we are not sure whether this ruler is correct or not. If this is a bent ruler, then we say that our measurements are inaccurate. Diba? Kung halimbawa nakabend yung ruler na yan and um, pwedeng mali-mali yung nilalabas yung ruler, in that case, the measurements are in are inaccurate even though na precise yung measurements mo. It happens. Okay? In that case, the, the, the ruler is not calibrated properly and therefore, the uh, uh, the measurement is inaccurate. Do, as we see in this example, even though that you have high precision, it's not necessarily that you'll get high accuracy because when you you, you need a, a true value or a standard value for it to check whether a measurement is accurate or not. Malino ba yon? Clear ba yon? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I hope that yes. will, that's clear. So uh, a classic example of the difference between precision and accuracy, most of you are not taking 71.1, so baka dito nyo lang makikita itong darks, this, darks na to. So, uh, sorry, so darks na to. So uh, a high precise value means that all the measurements, para kang nag para kang nag diba? In that case, if all the, of, if all your, um, ano tawag dun sa ginagamit sa darks? <laughs> ano yun? <laughs> Yung pinangaano mo sa darks? <laughs> okay. Right, oh. Dark, yeah, kung ano, dark lang talaga. Dark, dark, and tar dark and target, di ba? Okay, if the darks are... Kung nga naman, nasa engot ako doon na. Pero sige. <laughs> if the darks are are close to each other, and syempre, mag-measure ka. Measurement is like um uh, uh performing darks so, or playing darks. So, so if if the darks are near the bullseye, it means that the measurements are accurate. Because if we say that the bullseye is the true value or the accurate or the... Uh, or the actual value, then all the measurements are near the true value. And therefore, the measurement has high accuracy. All, and as you see here, all the measure, all the darts are close to each other. Therefore, you have high precision as well because all the measurements are close to each other. Is this clear? Clear ba to? That's why this measurement has high precision and also high accuracy. Is this clear? Malino ba tayo rito? Yes, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, for example, there are some tar there are some targets that are near there are some darts that are near, near the bullseye, but others are not near the bullseye. So in that case, there are quantities that are accurate enough um, to uh, there are, that are accurate enough, and there are some that are inaccurate enough, and therefore the measurements are far from each other. Hence, it may have high accuracy. It may have high accuracy, but in that case, other measurements since it's far from the true from one of the measurements, like this one, is far from this one, we see that there is some low precision happening. So it is low, uh, it is imprecise, the measurements are imprecise, but some of these measurements have high accuracy. Okay? Now, on the other hand, there are some cases where you are precise in measure, um, in um, targeting one particular area, but this particular area is far from, uh, from the bullseye. In that case, uh, you are precise in doing the measurements, but the accuracy is low. 
uh, usually this is uh, this is due to this is due to uh, uh, problems in calibration. Ang tawag dyan ay systematic error. If you have a, a, a problem in calibrating your measurement measuring device, you have what we call as a systematic error. Okay? So yeah, for example, here you have a systematic error happening because um, even though your measurements are precise, the measurement is inaccurate. And of course, you don't want this to happen. Low precision and low accuracy. Malayo na nga, di na nga accurate yung, yung mga tigra mo, ang layo pa ng mga Ano mga measurements mo? You don't want that to happen. You just need to repeat the experiment if that's the case. Okay? Questions? Questions? Are there any questions? So ah, okay, so chill lang yata tayo dyan, di ba? So, now, uh, of course, when we go to measurements, as I said in the in the first slide, we have what's known as standard as a standard quantity. And um, for since we are we are Filipinos, <laughs> we are using the SI units. So, so the SI units and in the sciences, it's the most standard use of of uh, most standard uh, system of units, and it's easy to use because it uses base ten. So yeah, it uses base ten as a prefix. So in the next slide, we will see some of the prefixes that we will be using in in this course. And then, uh, basically, if you want to measure something, you just attach a prefix to the to the base unit. There are different base units. In fact, there are seven of them. As we see in this diagram, we have our meter, second, kilogram, mole, candela, Kelvin, and ampere. So um, for Physics 71, we're only mostly interested in these three, meters, seconds, and kilograms so, uh, as the base units. So, now, when you run to write your um, units, uh, um, in words, you need to write it in small letters. For example, if you want to write five newtons, you write just five newtons, not five capital newtons. Okay? Not this one. Is that clear? Of course, ang convention naman ay five capital n lang yan. Diba? You should, this is what we should do uh, instead of this. But if you want to write your units, you write it in small letters. Okay? Questions? May mga tanong ba rito? Now, may mga tanong ba rito? So, I believe uh, all, most of you are familiar with this topic, with this idea of the, the SI units, di ba? So, yeah. No? Now, the question here is, bakit, ano ang sabi ng diagram na to? What do you mean by this diagram here? By this diagram. Bakit itong mga to? Ano to mga letters na yan? These letters or these symbols are what's known as your unit, um, um, universal constant. So, and the, what happened... Uh, in the past decade, is uh, the SI unit was redefined so that all the universal constants are now constant and not based on the measurement. That is to say, for example, uh, the H is known as your Planck's constant. The Planck's constant is defined in terms of these base quantities. But when the when the um, when the SI units were, were, were redefined, baliktad na. The Planck's constant is now a fixed number, and the, the base measurement, which is kilogram, is now defined in terms of the Planck's constant. So ito na yung ginawa natin fundamental. Why, what's the rationale of that? The rationale is because these are universal quantities. So kahit kasama mo yung alien, kahit may alien kang kasama dyan, um, they will still uh, be aware of these physical quantities. Iba nga lang yung measure, iba nga lang yung magiging number nila. For example, baka H equals 1 yan. <laughs> natural, ano pala no? natural units pala yung gamit nila. So, the point here is, these quantities, um, ngayon, all the measurements, all the units of measurement that we are using, the base units that we are using, are defined in terms of the fundamental universal constants. Because the universal constants are more fundamental than the units that we are, do we are using. Malino ba yun? Is that clear? Yes, yes, sir. So the, re the redefinition was done last 2020. Sobrang recent lang yan. Ang pinakahuling na redefine ay kilogram. Kasi dati ang, ang gamit natin sa kilogram ay yung, yung ano pa, yung bakal pa na nasa France. <laughs> that, uh, that plate, that sinasabi natin, this is the standard kilogram. The problem with that standard kilogram is that it changes. <laughs> Kasi since object yan, na, naglulus yan ng mass, and through time, nagbabago yung mass niya when they, when they measured it again. So, hindi mag, walang sense na gumamit ka ng standard na nagbabag. So, in that case, uh, we measured, we used um, our mass based on um, the Planck's constant and uh, the definition of their speed of light. This is speed of light. 
And this is, I think, um, frequencies of cesium atom at that. Yeah, mga ganun ganun. Okay, is that clear? May tanong ba tayo rito? May tanong And ba tayo so rito? Okay, sige. Wala namang tanong. So these are some of the SI prefixes that we are using, that we will be using. Lahat ng mga nakabod, yun yung mas gagamitin natin. Sometimes, uh, usually naman sa Physics 71, walang masyadong malalaki or maliliit na units or numbers. Uh, yun yung maganda sa atin. We are, ang, ang usually malalaki lang, abot na ng kilonewtons or maybe mega, bihirang-bihira yun. So, kilo or... Uh, so, lalabas yung kilo, minsan centi, milli, micro, bihira yung micro. Or, of course, your base unit. So, yeah. Of course, when we do your uh, measurements, wag yung lalagyan ng period. For example, 5 millimeters is just it's just 5 millimeters. Wala nang period yan. Wala nang period. Unless, nasa, nasa end ng sentence, of course. So, so this is 555 millimeters. Of course, may period yan. But hindi mo lalagyan basta-basta ng period after the after the symbol because it's not that way. Okay? Just ano lang, review lang to. Okay? Questions? I won't deal with this anymore. Kaya nyo na yan. <laughs> may tanong ba dito? Are there any questions? Wala, na Wala naman. Okay, thank you. So, so how do we convert? When we convert units, of course, we, sometimes you need to convert from one unit to another kasi minsan hindi i-practical. Halimbawa, kung yung pinag-uusapan natin dito ay radius ng atom, ayaw mo namang isulat yung 10 to the minus 10 meters ng, ng, na size ng atom, di ba? So, that is, you will convert units, for example, to angstrom, halimbawa. So, in that case, we will convert from one prefix to another prefix, even though they have the same base unit. Uh, Siyempre, dapat same yung base unit nila. Otherwise, you're dealing with um, a translation from one unit or to another, from one digital quantity to another. Ayaw mo namang mangyari yun, di ba? So, yun. So, from one prefix to another prefix, basically what you are doing there is you multiply by one. <laughs> so, for example, recall, uh, of course, you know this, base, even though even in elementary, siguro kayo, alam nyo na to, you have 100 centimeters in one meter. So, what you are doing when you use your um, factor label method, also known as conversion, you just multiply by one. What happens there is you divide both sides, this term here, by 100 cm and get like this. So one is just one meter over 100 cm or pwede rin namang 100 cm over one meter. Okay? By the way, um, the brackets outside these units are just basic, basically physics 71 conventions. You will see that especially in the exam. It basically just gives you an idea that these are units. So you don't need to write this in your FCs, for example. Ano lang namin yan? Notation namin yan. <laughs> Unique, uniquely Physics 71 notation yung may bracket sa mga units na. Okay? Just, uh, just uh, uh, a heads up. Huwag kayong magugulat kung bakit may mga bracket kung mga to. It's just, it just means that we are specifying that this is a physical unit. Unit, unit lang yan. Okay? Sige. Now, are there any questions so far? Are there any questions so far? None. Okay. None. None, sir. Now, sige. Um... Let's have an example. Okay, so, uh, so what we will be doing is, uh, please try this for maybe two minutes. <laughs> Actually, kaya mo ng one minute to, pero sige. Please try this for two minutes and then we'll go back with, and we answer this. Okay? 